Sandra, let's bring in Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg, former National Security Advisor to Vice President Pence and the co-chairman of the American First Policy Institute, Center for American Security. We're at the uh, touchscreen, General. This is the overview of Ukraine, and we can see that the amount of red on the screen that represents the areas under Russian control is beginning to uh, increase, potentially here down in the south of the country, where forces coming up from Crimea have now taken the city of Kherson. They're also moving toward Mariupol here in the northeast, Mariupol. According to the deputy mayor, there has been under bombardment for some 26 hours. Uh, there also uh, apparently are reports of fighting in and around the area of Enerhodar, which is where the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is. That's the biggest nuclear power plant in all of Europe. And then, General, as far as we know, the plan ultimately for Russian forces would be to sort of hook west and then uh, west south uh, west to uh, surround the city of Odessa. That would give them control of the entire Black Sea coast of, of Ukraine. What kind of an advantage would get that give them as they then try to move on uh, through the rest of the country here? You know, John, well, thanks for having me. Well, look, Odessa is important. It's the third largest city. And, and if they take that, they've got sea access. I think, though, what we're actually seeing is actually the uh, not the beginning of the end, but the end of the beginning. We're looking at new stages. And the stages that we're going to watch, and we should watch very carefully, is uh, Putin going into Kiev and Kharkiv and, and taking those cities down by massive bombardment. Barbon, bombardment. bombardment. Look, years ago, uh, when I was in Europe, I took a special team into Sarajevo when General Morion was there with the UN Protection Force, the UNPRO-4, and went, got on the ground and was watching heavy artillery just demolish the city of Sarajevo from the heights around the, around the city. And I came back into... Uh, into European command and said, look, get ready, we're going to go in there. And everybody told me, no, we're not going to do that, it's not going to happen. Well, we went in. And I think when you start to see the images of heavy bombardment coming in on, uh, especially the capital city, I think the, the people of the world are going to say, well, this may have gone too far. And I think that earlier comment about mm. a no-fly zone on the western uh, part of Ukraine may start to take effect. And that may, I understand what Brett said earlier about this kind of raises the game sure. and raising the odds. But look, sooner or later, the people of the world are going to say, look, this has gone way too far. Remember, when the Bosnian Civil War ended, we took Milotic, who was the senior general uh, of, the, uh, of the Bosnian Serbs, and Karadic, who was the president, and we brought him up on war crime charges. And you're reaching a point now where that, the bombardment of a city like that of Kiev is, in fact, a war crime. So I, we're at the start of a brand new phase, and it's going to be really interesting to watch how the world reacts to the when you start seeing these video images of a city, a modern city, being destroyed by a predator nation uh, of Russia, and how are they going to react. And I'm not too sure that the jury's out on that. And I would, if I was President Biden, I would have taken my advisors, put them in a room, and said, you come up with every option you've got. To, to the worst, to the best, and, and basically like they do in poker, this yeah. may be all in. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, this idea of a no-fly zone certainly is something that keeps getting pushed by Ukrainian yeah. uh, parliament members, but they want a no-fly zone over the entire country. One, one other thing that uh, I wanted to run by you real quickly is, I don't know if you saw Ambassador Volker, and we talked with Brett Baer about this just a second ago, but here's the convoy that uh, mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, yeah. this, this is just a small part of it, and this goes for 40 miles northwest of Kiev up all the way up to the Belarusian border. Yeah. Ambassador Volker was suggesting that we've got some A-10 warthogs that are about to to be decommissioned, why don't we just send them over to Ukraine? I mean, can you imagine the shooting gallery that an A-10 pilot would have in, in this environment, but again, like a no-fly zone? Is that a provocation that leads to other things that you don't want to have happen? Yeah, you know, I'm looking at, uh, I bet you there's some U.S. Air Force pilots out there salivating and wanting to change their citizenship to Ukrainian right about now so they can get in with the A-10 Warthogs. Look, we did that in World War II with the Eagle Squadron in England when we sent American pilots in to fly for the RAF. We did it in, in China when we had the Flying Tigers that were American volunteers. You may see something like that. I mean, th that is an impressive target to, to try to take out. But sooner or later, we're going to have to make some hard choices. And uh, the president is going to have to do that. He's going to have to be, what I said earlier, he's going to have to become a wartime president. Whether he likes it or not, we're kind of there. All right, General Kellogg, we'll see where this goes. It looks like it's going to take a lot longer than a lot of people thought it would. We'll have you around for a while. General yeah. Keith Kellogg, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.